Hey, uh, James, I'm, I'm really sorry. I actually, I can't do this talk with you. Uh, okay. Um, why? What's the problem? Um, well, so I made this pull request and I'm having some trouble with it. And um, I, I have to figure out why the CI is failing. So I don't have enough time to do the talk with you, unfortunately. Right. Uh, okay. Um, what's the problem with, the, with, with, with your pull request? What's, uh, can you run it locally? Well, I, I tried to. Uh, I figured out it's the end-to-end -end tests that are failing. And after a lot of investigation, I found the script that runs the tests. Uh, and I tried to run it myself, but then this is what happened. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's some uh, dependencies missing there. It says uh, container diff command not found. Right. So I installed that right on my machine, and I found some other dependencies I was missing. I put them all straight onto my machine. So I'm going to have to remember to clean all of that up. But then I ran into this. Right, okay. Yeah, it looks like we're trying to push to a production image repo there. Right, so the image registry, unfortunately, is hard-coded in the script. So then I edited it to use my script, or use my own image registry, which is another thing I'm going to need to remember to clean up later. But then I ran into this. Uh, that looks like we're trying to connect to a different cluster, maybe. It's the production cluster, in fact. The production cluster is hard-coded into the script, and I can't access it, and I probably shouldn't be able to access it. Now I need to figure out how to make my own cluster, and I have to get the script to use it, and that's all going to take me a really long time. So I think you should just do this talk on your own. Okay, uh, we can do better than this. It's 2019. Everything's cloud-native. Um, have you looked at Jenkins X? Um, what about the project that you've been working on, Tekton? You know, that is a good point. In fact, I think both of those projects could probably help me out here. Actually, let, let's rewind. Maybe we should introduce ourselves and uh, explain what we're going to be talking about. That's a great idea. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is James Rawlings. I'm a software engineer at CloudBees. Um, I've been uh, working for the last couple of years trying to build software to help developers uh, build better, faster, better software faster. And hey, everybody, I'm Christy Wilson. I'm a software engineer at Google, and I lead the Tekton project. During my career, I've worked in a lot of different industries. I've worked on mobile, I've worked in financial, I've worked on AAA games, and I always seem to end up gravitating towards CI CD related work. And so Google has been no exception, and I'm really excited about leading the Tekton project. Okay, so we're really excited to be talking today uh, about how we've been uh, pulling these two open source projects together, Jenkins X and Tekton Pipelines. And maybe that'll help me out with my broken CI, in fact. I really wasn't looking forward to trying to reverse engineer all those bash scripts. And cloud native CI CD is probably better suited to what I'm trying to do anyway. And I think that a lot of engineers and companies can relate to the sorts of problems that I was running into. Okay, so we've heard about this cloud native, but what well, actually is cloud native? That's a, that's a good point. Uh, I find myself using that phrase all the time, but I didn't actually realize what it meant. So I looked up the definition um, as defined by the CNCF, and their definition is cloud native computing uses an open source software stack to deploy applications as microservices, packaging each part into its own container, and dynamically orchestrating those containers to optimize resource utilization. So. That is a bit of a mouthful, but I, I think we can break it down. So open source applications are, sorry, cloud native applications are open source. The architecture is microservices and containers. We dynamically orchestrate those containers, and through that orchestration, we optimize our resource utilization. Okay, uh, containers, that's another thing that we've heard a little bit about. What exactly are containers? Well, a container image uh, is a bundle where you take an application's binary and you package it up with all the configuration and dependencies that that binary needs, and then you distribute that. And then when containers run, they usually share an operating system, but they run in isolated processes. Okay, I can see there's going to be lots of benefits around this. Um, it really helps developers uh, build and package up their software and then start distributing it as well. Um, Containers, you said, have they, they, they actually don't have an OS themselves. They're actually they're processes, right? So you can have that utilization, which means there's fast, really fast startup times for containers. And there's a lot of savings there compared to, say, virtual machines, where VMs actually have an entire OS in each one. 
with uh, containers that actually you know, share in that host, so uh, using those layers. So there's a significant uh, savings in costs um, compared to VMs as well. Right, and the containers are really well suited for CI, CD too. If you remember at the beginning, the very first problem I was running into was that I didn't have all the dependencies that I needed. But if that logic had instead been in a container, then I could have just run the container and I would have had everything I needed. Okay, so if you've got, we've talked about containers, but what if you've got a lot of containers? How would you, how would you run them? So that's where Kubernetes comes in. And for a lot of us, this is what cloud native ends up looking like. We use containers as our most basic building block, and then we use Kubernetes to add the dynamic orchestration of those containers, and we optimize resource utilization with it. And with, with Kubernetes, you can tell it how your containers should be deployed. You can tell Kubernetes what services they need, what storage, et cetera. And then not only does it let you combine containers, but Kubernetes also separates uh, the hardware management from the container management. So you get features like if a machine that's running your container goes down, then Kubernetes will schedule uh, another schedule the container on a machine that's up. I can see there's going to be some great benefits around this for, for around Kubernetes because this starting to become, become a standardization for a cloud implementation. Um, every major cloud provider out there has a Kubernetes offering now. Some of them actually have managed offerings as, as well. Um, this really helps with application portability, so you can develop your applications, and you can then start not being tied to particular cloud providers. Um, you'll be able to actually move, move that across using Kubernetes. Um, this really also helps with the uh, innovation that people can actually build on top of the standardization. So Kubernetes is a rich ecosystem of innovation, um, and it's a fantastic open source community as well. Um, and again, you get the best use of resources and then these, uh, these different ar these architectures, these modern microservice architectures are easily developed on top of this. So for CICD, Kubernetes gives us um, some opportunities, but it also gives us some new challenges. And some things are just still the same challenge. For example, uh, maybe containers make it easy for me to have all the dependencies for the logic that I need, but uh, you still have to distribute those containers. Um, and if you remember at the beginning, the next problem I ran into was that I didn't have access to the image registry that my CI CD was using. And some things get, just get harder. So if we break everything down from monoliths into microservices, then those microservices inherently have more, more moving pieces and more dependencies and they're more difficult to manage. So that's the landscape that we're dealing with. And that's what cloud native means for us. So James and I have been working on two separate but related projects which can take advantage of the opportunities of cloud native CI CD and try to make some of the problems easier. James, can you talk a bit about what cloud native has meant for Jenkins and how that led to Jenkins X? Love to. Uh, thanks, Christy. So yeah, um, just a little bit of a, uh, I guess, background. Um, Jenkins is a phenomenal open source project um, with um, amazing um, statistics that we can back that up with. Um, it was actually created in the form of Hudson in 2004 by Koske. Um, there are, that we know of, 200,000 Jenkins running servers, but actually that number is close, is it's estimated to be closer to 1 million, actually. These are just the, number, the servers that we actually know are running uh, today. There are fi around 15 million Jenkins users as well. So that, as an open source project, is, it has tremendous success. Um, and a lot of that success is around, is around the plugins as well. There are thousands of plugins that people have uh, developed over the years, which is uh, really, really helped that extending and adding, adding features. There are some architectural challenges, though, however, and, and some of those down to the success that Jenkins has actually had. Um, it, Jenkins, X, sorry, Jenkins is actually a single point of failure. So if you were to perform any maintenance on Jenkins, then you'd um, maybe install a plugin, or, and you need to restart with JVM or you need to do some uh, garbage collection or other, any kind of other maintenance on Jenkins server. If you take that down, you're actually going to miss some webhook events and you can miss build triggers as well. Um, also coming back to the, the successes of, of, of Jenkins with the, all the plugins that have been created, you, know, you can actually install a thousand plugins into your Jenkins server, which also means is it can, be, can lead to problems. 
if you install a thousand plugins into your Jenkins server, then that's going to require lots of memory and, and stability as well. You can have conflicts with it, within these um, plugins as well. So it's not really, really, really great answer going forward to be able to scale. And also we've got this concept of a noisy neighbor where when you actually run a pipeline on Jenkins, it actually gets executed on the Jenkins server, on the Jenkins master. Um, if, you're, if you're running, if you write a bad pipeline and that's running, then another team could actually be affected by your changes because you could actually bring, have a negative effect on that Jenkins server. So that kind of leads us to where Jenkins X is actually aiming for. Jenkins X is aiming to build on the successes of the Jenkins open source community and the open source project. Um, it's, we recognize with Kubernetes the standardization we were saying around um, a cloud, standardization of cloud provider in Kubernetes. Kubernetes is, is, is a viral uh, project, I would say, in there. and it's, again, it's a, a, a very vibrant um, open source community as well. But it's not that easy as a developer to actually get started on Kubernetes. There's a lot of new terminology, a lot of new ways of working, a lot of new things to actually get up and running before you can even start writing code. So there, are, there is a, a learning curve, um, an en higher entry to barrier to actually developing the Kubernetes. Jenkins X is aiming to build, is aiming to provide a developer experience for Kubernetes so that you can, familiar, if you're a familiar Java developer or Node, Node developer, we can actually make it easier for you to move to the developing on Kubernetes. We do that by being able to uh, pro provide a CLI to be able to create clusters and actually create applications or import existing source code repositories. And we'll add everything that's actually needed to be able to build, package, and deploy and run that application on Kubernetes. Um, we have the concepts of environments as well. Um, and this isn't just a staging in a production environment, for example. This is also, we have the ability of a preview environments. And what this is where we can, um, if a, a pull request is proposed, we'll actually take that change, build out a temporary preview environment dynamically and quickly, and be able to deploy that change into that preview environment so that we can then start collaborating and seeing that change actually deployed and running, seeing how it behaves, seeing if it's right, and run automated tests, get product and UX designers, and everybody that's actually involved in actually uh, releasing that, that change and approving it can actually be involved on that pull request um, um, stage as well. Um, Jenkins X also looks at uh, other recommended practices around GitOps, for example, where we can, everything, any change that's actually, um, that's actually needed to your cluster is, happens via a Git repository. So if you want to tweak some memory settings for an application or you want to install a new application or upgrade it, then you'd actually um, we automate the pull request to a Git repository. And then when that's approved, you've got traceability, who approved it, who proposed it. And then that's what, that, when that's merged, it's actually rolled out to that environment. There's also a, a new plugin extensibility model, which if we go back to some of the challenges that we've got with the traditional Jenkins servers, uh, installing lots of plugins into a single JVM, well, this, um, this extensibility model that we have is installing apps. Actually, they are developed as microservices. So they have their own release cycles, their own resource uh, usage management as well. Um, and we can then um, build out these nice modern event-driven architectures. And lastly, one of the really exciting things that we've, um, that Jenkins X uh, supports is pluggable pipeline execution engines. So we started off with using ins installing a Jenkins server um, and then automating everything for, uh, for uh, creating applications and import applications and creating all the jobs in Jenkins. But then that also brought some challenges. Um, for example, it was running all the time. If you've got, say, I think it was around about four or six gig of, of, of memory, we've heard that there's a lot higher. Um, that's actually been running all the time on the cloud and which we're being charged for. So. That was kind of seen as a bit of a waste and we wanted to save some of those costs there. And it really, we started looking at other uh, pipeline execution engines and that happily brought us to where we are today with, with Tecton. So Christy, what's Tecton? Uh, so the Tecton project is all about creating uh, open source cloud native building blocks that can be used to build CI CD systems. 
And even though Tecton and most of its components run on Kubernetes, the goal is to target any language, any framework, and any platform. The Tecton project started out as just pipelines, but recently we've been expanding the scope. And we've been excited uh, to add the dashboard project and the CLI project, which are both about interacting with Tecton pipelines. And then we also have an experimental repo where we're starting to incubate some promising looking projects. And a lot of people are working on it. So right now we have regular contributors from a lot of different companies like we've got Google, we've got CloudBees, Pivotal, Red Hat, IBM, and more. And if you're interested in helping out, we've put a lot of effort into trying to make sure that new folks can ramp up and contribute as quickly as possible. So please join us. So Tekton Pipelines specifically is about writing CI CD pipelines. It runs on Kubernetes and it takes advantage of everything that Kubernetes has to offer. A bit of background, uh, back in early 2018, the Knative Serving and Knative Build projects were created. So Knative Serving is an open source Kubernetes based serverless system. And for that, they needed a mechanism for going from source to deployment. And that's what when Knative Build was created, which allowed you to build images within your Kubernetes cluster. And people got pretty excited about being able to do that. And they wanted to use, they started wanting to use it for other things. And they wanted to do more complicated things, like they wanted to do, uh, like run tests in addition to, to running a build. And they, they wanted to chain builds together into more complicated pipelines. And so then we created the Build Pipelines project in Knative. And, and, uh, and eventually it migrated, and eventually we decided that there was enough going on that we migrated it to its own org and started to uh, create multiple projects around it. So the goals of Tekton Pipelines, we want to have portability between CI CD vendors. So when you're using Tekton Pipelines, um, you, you're using an API spec that any CI CD vendor could comply with. So that means that you could potentially write your pipeline once and you can use it with a variety of different tools. We also wanted to add types into pipelines and we want them to be decoupled. So you should be able to take a really complex uh, CI that's used for a project and run it against your own environment, or you can take pieces of that CI and run them in isolation. And we want to be able to target Kubernetes as a deployment environment, as well as completely different targets as well, like mobile, you name it. So how does Tekton pipelines actually work? Well, the key to knowing how it works is to understand that it's built with CRDs. So if you haven't seen CRDs before, it stands for custom resource definition, and it's a way of extending Kubernetes itself. So out of the box, Kubernetes comes with a bunch of resources like pods, services, and deployments. But then with CRDs, you can add your own resources, and you provide uh, binaries that are called controllers, which act on those resources. And we've used that to create a CI CD platform on top of Kubernetes. So, the type, so as far as what types we've added, our, our most basic building block is something we call a step. And this is actually a Kubernetes container spec, which already exists in Kubernetes. So this is a way of specifying an image that you want to run and then everything you need to run that image, like what environment variables it needs, what arguments, et cetera. And then our first new type that we added is called a task. A task lets you combine steps. The steps will run in sequential order and they will all run on the same Kubernetes node. And then the next new type is called a pipeline. And a pipeline lets you combine tasks. So now you can have uh, multiple tasks and you can express the order that you want them to run in so they can run sequentially, they can run concurrently, and you can create complicated graphs. The tasks are not guaranteed to execute on the same node, but because they declare inputs and outputs, you can actually use the pipeline to take an output of one task and provide it as an input to another task. So both pipelines and tasks are types that you define once and then you use them again and again. To actually invoke them, you create what we're calling runs. So our next two new types are called pipeline runs and task runs, which will actually invoke pipelines and tasks. And then the final type is used to provide runtime information. So when you're actually executing pipelines and tasks, you need to provide things like what image registry to use, what Git repository you should execute against, and you do that with pipeline resources. So altogether, we added five new CRDs. So we have tasks that are made up of steps, we have pipelines that are made of tasks, and then you invoke both of those with pipeline runs and task runs, and you provide runtime information with pipeline resources. So let's go back to that pull request that I was struggling with at the beginning. So if you remember, there are a few things that were going wrong. I was missing the dependencies I needed. 
the CI was trying to use production infrastructure that I probably couldn't and shouldn't use. And then there's like the meta problem, which was that when I set out to run this, I didn't know any of this up front. So let's look at what this could be like if I had been using Tekton pipelines. So I would have been able to look at the pipeline definition for the repository I was using, and that would have been broken down into a series of tasks. So it, since each of those tasks is made up of steps, and each step is a container, that solves the problem with the dependencies, because I don't need to guess about those or install them locally, I'll just be able to run the pipeline with the containers. And then as for the production infrastructure, like image registries and the Kubernetes cluster, that is controlled with pipeline resources. And since it's a runtime thing, I can easily provide my own instead. And then for the meta issue of not knowing any of this up front, uh, this is just a sneak peek at what a pipeline definition looks like. And you can see that it starts out with a declaration of all the pipeline resources it needs. So right away, before I try to run anything, I would have known that I need an image registry, there's going to be a Git repository involved, and I need a cluster that I can deploy to. And you can see more examples of tasks and pipelines in action in the examples directory in the Tekton Pipelines repo. But James, you've been working on adding support for Tekton Pipelines to Jenkins X. How is that going? It's, um, as you can see, well, we love it. Uh, this really has solved many of the challenges that we have when we're looking to building out a CI/CD platform for Kubernetes that is cloud native. We really want to be leveraging uh, the cloud, using the cloud well, um, only using resources when we actually need them, and, and using it in the best possible way as well. Um, so Jenkins X, as Christy, you, you said that, that we've uh, adopted uh, Jenkins, uh, sorry, uh, Tekton Pipeline as a pipeline execution engine. We've got a consistent way of working, whether it's uh, traditional Jenkins servers or whether it's uh, Tekton pipelines as well, so that developers can start to feel the benefit and, and it's just um, um, using more appropriate and more cloud-friendly implementations. Um, Jenkins X also uses another open source project from the Kubernetes ecosystem called Prow. Um, Prow is many different things, but uh, in, a, in a nutshell, then it's, um, it handles uh, webhook events from, from Git providers, um, and then can uh, create these CRDs that Christy was talking about earlier before. Um, it can also then update uh, pull requests, and you can actually have better control. You can have this kind of uh, chat ops uh, communication on pull requests to have um, triggering different behavior and triggering different builds as well. So it really works well with, uh, with, with Tekton. Um, in Jenkins X, we, um, we wanted to create and um, use a consistent way that Jenkins developers are familiar with. So where Jen traditional Jenkins users, those 50 million users that we mentioned before, we want them to be, feel familiar um, with their own ways of working, their own existing uh, pipelines, but then have a way that we can actually leverage Tekton. Um, so on the right hand side, it's, uh, the, the slides will be available afterwards, but is, is something that is a sample a pipeline, Jenkins X uh, YAML file. Um, here you can see some of the resources actually that Christy was actually talking about, uh, having um, um, the, the steps actually. And under the hood, this will actually generate these task resources that, uh, that Christy was talking to, to about for, uh, for Tekton. So we've got a, a way that Jenkins developers and users will be familiar to be able to start leveraging the benefits and the power of Tekton pipelines. Um, we've also got the concept of build packs where we can actually create um, common, um, uh, common uh, shared build packs and that we can actually uh, use, um, uh, so we can actually have better maintenance and we don't have to say, update every single uh, repo if we need to make a change. You can also then extend these build packs as well and override different steps as well. Um, and one of the other important things is uh, we actually, we we're very proud that we actually dog food everything as well. Um, and one of the great things as well that we've, we've done, in, we've just completed this week, is moved every single Jenkins X repository over to using Tekton based pipelines. Um, we've already had dramatic results of um, improved stability and cheaper cloud builds as well, and we'll soon be having some metrics to actually support and back that up as well. 
but we're very, very excited. It also allows us to uh, leverage other open source projects that have been developed when we talked about Kubernetes ecosystem. Things like Kanico, out, out of, um, Jenkins X provides out of the box integrations with Kanico, so we've got more secure way of building Docker images, faster and more reliable as well. So with that, we could probably uh, dive into a bit of a, just a very quick demo, just to show some of the concepts that uh, with Jenkins X and then actually generating these pipeline Tekton Pipeline resources. Should we give that a go? Do it. Let's go. Okay, so um, I've already installed Jenkins X um, on GKE. I actually ran a command of JX uh, create cluster uh, GKE. We've recently um, released Jenkins X 2.0, which actually enables Tekton by default when creating GKE clusters. Um, so that's a that's a that's a great win. So I've already run this. That is running on GK. If I run kubectl get nodes, kubectl is the uh, CLI to actually interact with Kubernetes clusters. We won't use this too much, but we can see we've got a four node cluster that's actually running on GKE. So we've also got a number of um, I've got a terminal over here. That's actually having a watch on pods. A pod is a, is a unit that's actually, which is a Kubernetes term. And this is actually what, which runs builds and software actually in Kubernetes. So we've got Jenkins X already installed and we see we've actually installed a few microservices here. A number of different controllers. These are related to Prow. And we can see we've also got a, um, actually if I do this one, QCTR get pods. We can see we've got uh, the two Tekton um, controllers and webhook there as well. So we've installed this out of the box. Um, what we're going to do is we're watching um, some Prowl jobs. These are custom resources within Kubernetes cluster. We're also going to watch for the pipeline run, and these are the task run as well. So we're going to create a quick start in Jenkins X. And we're going to see that build trigger, and we're going to see the builds actually run, in, and see the resources from Tekton. So let's start that by running JX. Oh, let's move into a friendly directory. JX creates quick start. There's a number of different quick starts that we have out of the box. You can customize this and use your own quick starts as well. Um, we're going to, when we create a quick start, we actually create a Git repository and push all of the code up there. And um, we also add in every, anything that's needed to be able to build or package or run that application on Kubernetes as well, if it doesn't already exist. This really helps when we want to import projects as well. So you might add in a Docker file or a, a pipeline or a Helm chart, which is something that's used for packaging applications and deploying out onto Kubernetes. So we're going to use my Git username. Um, actually, let's do that again because I'm going to create it in a different GitHub organization. Yes, use my username and create it in a shared uh, GitHub organization. Let's give it a new name called um, Virtual Summit Demo. So that's going to create us a Git repository. And now we're going to be asked which quick start do we want to use? Now, these are really, really basic, but lots of different languages that we have support. Um, let's create a Node.js application. We want to initialize it with Git, yes, and just use a default commit message. And that's going to create us our Node.js application. It's going to create a folder on my local machine and then create a Git repository as well and push the code up there. Now, that's been created in that one command. And we can see here that a, a build has now automatically been triggered. So we can actually watch some of the activities of that pipeline whilst we get to go and actually have a look at this, what's been created. Here we see we can, a build has actually started and it's saying we're going to use a Jenkins, uh, a Jenkins X YAML file from the build pack here. And these are the steps that it's actually going to go through. So whilst that's happening, Let's go and have a look at the uh, repo that was created. 
this is our project. We can see we've got uh, a Jenkins XYAML. Now, this doesn't actually have anything. This is inheriting a build pack of JavaScript, which is some, another GitHub organization that we've got, which is here. Um, again, these are customizable. You can see that actually we have these steps that, that build pack is going to use. But you can actually override any of these steps as well and extend this pipeline by committing into your Jenkins XYAML file in your local repository. So that's okay, but the cool thing is now we can actually see. Oh, and that's already, that's one of the things actually has gone quite quick because Tekton is crazy fast. So already we've got a build that's actually been triggered. And if we look closely, we should be able to see the Prowl jobs that we've created. And these are the pipeline run and the task run. So we mentioned, Christy talked about some other um, resources that were created. So let's go and have a look at that. Cube CT, oops. Cube CTL get task. So we can see this is our demo. Now you can see we've actually got a second one here as well because we're doing an environment promotion using our GitOps. So Tekton is actually now rolling out that change into a staging environment after a pull request has been um, merged into our Git repository for our staging repo. We can go and have a look at this task. Look at that task description, and we can see, oh, that's bad. We shouldn't have that anymore. I've just noticed that we need to remove our, the Docker socket because we actually use Canico now. So I'll raise an issue and fix that soon. Um, but we can see these are actually the steps that have actually been generated um, for, our, for our Tekton pipeline. And you can see there's quite a few there. And we've also automatically added in a load of environment variables that we, that we need. You can see, here's our steps. And this is our task resource. So this is how we are easily able to create quick starts and start using a Jenkins XYAML file and generating the resources that are required for a Tekton powered pipeline. Um, and we can see now we've actually got a promotion actually happening. And um, once that runs quickly, I will just go into this. Um, I've forgotten what we called this. It was, what was the application called? Virtual, there we go, Virtual Summit Demo. Very quickly, we can check out, because we've automated the CI CD for everything for this, for this repo, we can uh, go onto a different branch. We can actually change the file very quickly. And then add in some text, hello, demo. Let's commit this change and let's propose it as a pull request. Let's push to our work in progress branch. Then we'll make a pull request. If we can go and see. Here we go, we've got a work in progress branch. Let's compare and make a pull request. And you can see a change. Okay, we're proposing a change of hello demo. Create pull request. This is going to send a webhook into Prowl. Prowl is going to create a custom resource, uh, a Prowl job, which we then use to generate some Prowl, sorry, some Tekton resources. When those exist, the, uh, the Tekton controller then processes that pipeline using the pipeline run and the task run. And if we're quick, we should be able to go and have a look at that. JX get build logs. And we can see a pull request. And this is the cool thing. We can actually see all the logs from all the different containers from in that pipeline. So all of these are actually different, um, different Docker images as well. So this really helps us build out nice and um, nice pipelines that use different Docker images for specific reasons. And we can see we're building this. Um, here we use the, do the Canico build, so building in the layers. We've actually got automatic caching now as well. So we've got real fast builds as well that are happening. And then we create our dynamically create our, our preview environment. We deploy that change into our preview environment. If we go back to our pull request, you 
we can see that we've got a comment back from our bot user from the cluster say, okay, look, your change has been deployed, and there it is. There's our change that we've proposed. <laughs> this is really uh, changing the way, because of the dog food in as well, it's changing the way we all develop. We're shifting and moving things to the left, so we get faster feedback, faster checks, faster automation, um, and greater collaboration as well. Um, and yeah, this is some, and the benefits from this as well, because we're utilizing the cloud well and getting faster reliable builds uh, that due to the tech talk. Okay, um, that's pretty much from the demo what we were going to show, I think. We could probably round that off. Um, let's present that. That was really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm really glad that I stuck around for this talk instead of uh, reverse engineering all those bash scripts. That I was working with. I totally I agree with what you said at the beginning. I think we can do better. And I think that we covered a lot that people could keep in mind when working with CI CD systems in general. Totally agree. And last but not least, we were really happy to announce at the Open Source Leadership Summit that Tekton and Jenkins X are now part of a new foundation called the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So this is an open foundation where we can collaborate with industry leaders to provide the best practices and guarantees for the next generation of CI CD systems. Um, and we're super happy to be part of this as well. And this is very exciting. Having the standardizations around CI CD where we, we can all benefit in a similar way by Kubernetes and CNCF, but around the cloud, they, uh, continuous delivery foundation is really going to help people. Cool. So if you're interested in getting involved, we'd love to have you. Um, you can take a look at the CDF website, cd.foundation. We have a co-located summit coming up at KubeCon Barcelona. And if you want to use uh, get started with J Jenkins X, you can check out the Quick Start. You can check out the Contributing Guide. And then similarly for Tekton, we also have a Quick Start and a Contributing Guide. And then uh, community docs in general in our community repo. Um, and yeah, uh, Christy and I are doing a talk at uh, a QCon as well. So if you are there, come and say hello uh, yeah. as well. We'd love to love to hear from you. Yeah, it's a pretty so it's a pretty cool time for CI/CD with cloud native technologies. We can have CI that runs more quickly with pipelines that are more complex, but at least show you at a glance what they're up to and that you can really easily reproduce. And that's it. So uh, thanks very much. Thank you.